Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click the notification bell and then come back and check out some of the other content I have on my channel. It is Sunday, February the 18th. Our devotions are coming from the Bible Promise Book Devotional for Women. And it is day seven of week seven, and the focus for week seven is forgiveness. Our devotion today is entitled, Do What He Does. <clears throat> Our scripture comes from the book of Mark, chapter 11, verses 25 through 26, out of the New King James Version, and it reads, And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespass. <clears throat> trespasses, excuse me. Okay, plain and simple. We've been kind of talking about this all week, but let's, uh, let's get into this today. The message of today's verses is pretty straightforward. It's hard to expect forgiveness when you refuse to forgive yourself. To be clear... God is able to offer forgiveness because his son Jesus paid the price for your sin. To accept Jesus' payment is to embrace forgiveness, not just as something you receive, but as something you give. To follow Jesus means to do what he does. Sure, you'll forgive imperfectly, but it should be the goal of your life to reflect his character in how you deal with others. Put my finger there and pause for a second. Oh my goodness, I can't even begin to start with the kind of characters Jesus came across and the way that he treated them. With grace, he was straightforward, uh, but also very loving, tolerant, even while he was hanging on the cross. He asked the Lord not to, God the Father, to not uh, count this against them because they didn't know what they were doing. I mean, that's compassion and grace. And I know it can be hard. You, There may be people in your life or that you cross paths with on a regular basis, whether they're colleagues or neighbors or family members, that are toxic. They're hard to be around because of the way they act. And I'm not suggesting that you, because of forgiveness or grace, that they suddenly, or that you have to allow them into your life to cause disruption or pain. That's not what I'm saying. I think a healthy boundary is perfectly appropriate if you have people in your life that are toxic, that are not good to have around. It being Forgiving somebody does not mean that you do not have any boundaries at all, that they can just run slipshod over you. No, I think Christians have mistaken grace and forgiveness for being doormats. The enemy will exploit it and he'll twist it in someone's mind to where people are like, you know, forget it. I'm not going to be a Christian. They're just pushovers. You don't have to be a pushover. You can offer grace and your forgiveness, but you can also set up that healthy boundary that keeps toxic people from introducing negativity and bad things into your life, okay? There are toxic people that you probably need to stay away from because of the ugly things that they say and how they make you feel about yourself, okay? Those people that are trying to scream louder than the voice of the Holy Spirit, sometimes we need healing away from the people that may have either caused the hurt or rub salt in that hurt, if that makes any sense at all. Okay, so forgiveness is an act of love. And Jesus said the greatest commandment commandments were to love God and then love everyone else. Look at Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 to 40. Forgiveness is an act of love. Okay, you might marvel at God's promised gifts and want to receive them for yourself, but the same gifts you receive are the very gifts God wants you to give to others. 
When you don't share, it's as if you're saying you want preferential treatment and would like to play by a different set of rules. It doesn't work that way. If you want grace, mercy, and forgiveness from the Lord, then it's important that you offer grace, mercy, and forgiveness to others. Now, since we know this is difficult in our flesh because we have a memory that holds on to things, we have hurts and pains the enemy's going to want to exploit and push the buttons for, it's important that we call on the Lord to get his help because there's some situations in life I just know there's no way. There's no way that I can do it. I can't do it without the Lord. I said, Lord, you're going to have to show me how to do this because the way I feel about that person right now and about that situation right now, I'd rather you just strike them down with a lightning bolt instead of me offer them forgiveness. Literally, I've had to say those words because I've been so upset or angry about something or someone. And I says, Lord, you command me to forgive and I want to walk in that. But my feelings right now, my emotions are just too much. I can't do it. But I need you to do it through me because they're not worth me giving up my heavenly home. And you, you have to have that attitude, acknowledging what you're feeling. You can't say, oh, it's fine. Everything's okay. And the Lord can totally see your heart. You can't hide anything from him. So it's very important that you offer the grace, mercy, and forgiveness you desperately want to receive yourself and that you not surrender eternity for the satisfaction of your flesh. Remember, I've said it for weeks. The flesh is not your friend. The flesh is the one that wants revenge. The flesh is the one, is the, is the one that wants to see them get theirs. Your flesh wants the satisfaction of you having no accountability and blaming everybody else. That's, that's not how that works. When we stand before the Lord, he's going to have his word and it's going to be you and him and he's going to have the Lamb's book of life. And he's going to say, what did I say to do in my word? You see what I mean? We have to have a heart that wants to do God's will. I want your will to be done in my life. Help me in the areas where I fall short. Help me to forgive those. Do not let a bitter root grow in me. See, those are prayers that you need to speak out to the Lord and acknowledge. Ask the Lord, search my heart and show me. Show me if I'm hanging on to bitterness and unforgiveness towards anyone. Even if it's been from years ago, my mom's generation, they were the ones that would sweep things under the carpet and not talk about it, you know, pretend it didn't exist. And then if you needed to, you know, it never gets dealt with. So it's a festering wound, you know, that can create this a perfect fertile ground for bitter roots to grow instead of just communicating and talking about it. And this isn't all about me, 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 my, my, my. I know we're in a society today. It's all about your truth and taking care of you and you do you and all that. No, 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 no. We have to put this on the Lord and say, Lord, I want you to have your way in me. And I desire to live my life the way you want me to live my life, not the way my flesh desires to live my life. Forgiveness is part of that. It's the best, biggest part of it. And as we learned from two days before, forgiveness frees you up to re-engage in life without the baggage of that bitterness weighing you down. Okay. God said, we must forgive. So what is your response? Let's pray. Lord, some of us are carrying a heavy burden of unforgiveness that we've been carrying around for a while. Could you take this from us, Lord, and teach us and show us how to forgive those who have really hurt us? Show us how to let go and release that into your hands that we can be set free from that bondage of bitterness, the baggage that weighs us down, that keeps us from having the full life that you want us to have. We thank you, Lord, for your grace, your mercy, and forgiveness. Now help us to walk that out ourselves towards others. Give us eyes that see and ears that hear you clearly and hearts that are tender and willing to obey. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Well, God bless you. And thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I do hope you decide to like and subscribe and click the notification bell. Come back and check out some of the other content I have on my channel. Uh, as I said, it's Sunday. My hubby and I have another day up here in Williamsburg. I absolutely am thrilled and blessed to be living in an area that is so close to the history of this nation and the beginnings, the colonial side of things. Uh, Virginia had been the capital of the colonies and the capital of Virginia. Uh, and it, to walk on the streets that you know our founders walked on and to go to the church, Bruton Parish Church, which I found out in my digging of my history, I'm related to the people. I'm related to quite a few people that lived here, <laughs> but the Page family, which um, donated a big chunk of funds that allowed the church to even be built is a thrill. And, you know, the, the way churches were back in colonial times, you know, the, the minister was up in a high, high pulpit and there was, you know, throne looking seats for the governor and, and people had their pews where they sat and there's name plates on the pews that show which founders sat where. So there's a, a pew there that's got George Washington's name on it and James Madison and Thomas Jefferson had been a governor. So his, you know, he was up there, but <laughs> up on the governor's seat. But um, it is a thrill to to be and walk amongst such history and not far from here is Yorktown where we won the battle that made us a nation. So we're going to be doing a little walking around today, picking up some things thrilled to bits yesterday that I was able to find uh, two colonial skirts and a blouse and one of the pretty type saucer hats, the straw hats that came out. They were like flat almost and they tied under here. <sighs> I found some that fit me and I was like, yeah, and those things can be expensive. And I was very blessed and surprised that they were as affordable as they were, although quite expensive still uh, compared to what I pay for my normal clothes. I still was tickled pink to find it. It was about a third of what I expected to pay. And so it's nothing fancy. I imagine that when I want the fancier things, I imagine it's going to cost a little bit more. But I, I got my start, so I was really happy. My hubby got that for my birthday slash anniversary slash Valentine's. So he's just one generous love, and he's, he's sitting right over there. Honey, say hello. <laughs> Nothing's open yet, so we're getting ready to go down and maybe have some breakfast. But... Uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful Sunday worshiping. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Bye until next time.